Before today's episode gets started, a huge thank you to Andrew, my Discord community moderator, for sharing this with me. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital just launched a really meaningful initiative. In the description below, you'll find a link to their website where you can send a free Valentine's Day card to St. Jude Kids. To start, you simply choose whichever artwork that you want on the card. Being a huge fan of magic, I chose this one. Then you can either type out your own message or select one of the pre-written messages that they have for you. Then you simply send the card and you really have made someone's day. Again, this is something that you can do for free and it takes less than a minute of your time, but it can have a huge impact on the kids over at St. Jude. So I hope that you can take a moment of your time to really brighten someone's day. Thank you in advance for doing this. And again, a huge thank you to Andrew for bringing this to my attention. Thank you all for your time. And now let's jump back into the episode. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So if you haven't seen my most recent deck tech on Elegith Crossroads Augur and Kaidel Chosen of Crufix, make sure you check that one out first. Today's episode is going to be a break the bank of that deck, and this episode won't make too much sense without that context. Regardless, both that episode as well as this one come to you courtesy of Mike, who's been supporting this channel as a golden pig tier patron, and I truly couldn't do this without amazing patrons like Mike, so again, thank you so much, Mike. Again, I go into more detail on the deck tech, but I'll give you a quick overview of what this deck's about. The deck's built around Elgith and Kaidel, focusing on turning Scry into draw, using the extra draws to power up Kaidel's ability to help cast big, splashy spells. So the more that we Scry, the more that we draw, and the more mana that we get. Let's begin by talking about some more efficient Scry cards, starting with Serum Visions and Mystic Speculation. Again, Elgith makes it so that our Scry is essentially draw, so these become incredibly efficient in this deck. Serum Visions is a sorcery that costs a balloon and says draw a card, Scry 2. Or in other words, if Elgith is in play, hey, for one mana, let's just draw three. So essentially Ancestral Recall, which is banned, but at sorcery speed. And Mystic Speculation is basically that, but even better. It's a sorcery for a blue that has buyback two and it says scry three. So again, with Elgith in play, pay a blue, draw three, but you can also pay a blue in two and then you get to draw three and get this card back. So essentially for this deck's purposes, this is a repeatable three mana draw three. And yeah, pretty much any deck would want that kind of a spell if it actually did that in all situations. Elgith can truly take advantage of the efficiencies of scry more than any other commander. So we're also going to add in some repeatable and efficient scry effects with In Search of Greatness and Life Crafter's Bestiary. In Search of Greatness is a new card from Kaldheim, and it's an enchantment that costs green green. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a permanent spell from your hand with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the highest converted mana cost among other permanents you control without paying its mana cost if you don't scry one. So essentially this can help us out in multiple ways. Most decks are going to be utilizing this card to cheat out really high cost things. Now, this might help us out in that way, which would be nice, but the more important thing is that this is a repeatable scry effect. For just two mana, we get to scry one on each of our turns. And again, those repeatable effects can really help us generate a lot of mana with Kaidel over time. And then Lifecrafter's Best Area is another repeatable scry effect. It's an artifact that costs three and says at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. So this can help us draw cards in multiple ways, first by scrying with our commander, and then also if we cast a creature spell, we can just pay a green to draw a card. But we've got a way to essentially double up all of our scry draws with Teferi's Ageless Insight. It's a legendary enchantment for two blue blue, and it says if you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. So yeah, this essentially makes all of our scry effects doubly as effective. And again, that basically means that Kaitel is going to be producing twice as much mana as well. For an enchantment that just costs 4 mana, that's pretty fantastic. But now let's go over some upgrades that help us with no maximum hand size, starting with Krufix God of Horizons and Finale Revelation. With the amount of cards that we can draw, having no maximum hand size can be a huge advantage for this deck. But Krufix actually helps us out in more ways than that. Krufix is a 4-7 indestructible god that costs 3 green blue. As long as your devotion in green and blue is less than 7, Krufix isn't a creature. Also, you have no maximum hand size, and if unused mana would empty from your mana pool, that mana becomes colorless instead. So Krufix is huge for this deck in that it basically lets us store cards as well as mana. We can build up a giant hand and build up our mana pool and just keep it all. Another card that can really help us out though is Finale of Revelation. 
It's a sorcery for X blue blue and it says draw X cards if X is 10 or more instead shuffle your graveyard into your library draw X cards untap up to five lands and you have no maximum hand size for that's the game exile finale revelation with Kaidel we can easily get over 10 mana into that X and this is going to do a ton of things for us not only will it draw some cards, untap some of our lands, shuffle our graveyard back into our library, but most importantly, it's going to give us no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. And that's just something that is permanent. After we have it, there's no getting rid of it. We even have a simpler way to get no maximum hand size, though, with something like Thought Vessel. This is a simple mana rock that costs two and taps for a colorless, but it has the very important text, you have no maximum hand size. So even just having this simple mana rock on the field can be a huge advantage for this deck. And while we're talking about mana rocks and ramp, let's just bring up Wayfarer's Bobble and Soul Ring. These are going to be two fantastic upgrades for our ramp package, and as always, I hope that Wayfarer's Bobble gets a reprint somewhere in the near future so it can be budget again and show up in the actual deck text and not just the Break the Banks. Next up, though, let's talk about some improved win conditions, starting with Chasm Skulker. Chasm Skulker is a 1-1 squid horror that costs 2 and a blue. It says whenever you draw a card, put a plus plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. And when Chasm Skulker dies, create X 1 1 blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of plus plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. So essentially, this can become a huge threat, and then when it dies, it creates a ton of tiny threats. And if our opponents are playing Islands, which many players do, they're going to be in big trouble. Our squid tokens are going to have Island Walk, so they can take out those players pretty quickly. But some even quicker ways to take out our opponents come with Staff of Domination and Umbral Mantle. Staff of Domination is an artifact that costs three, and it does a lot of things, so here we go. Pay 1, untap it. Pay 2, tap it, and you gain 1 life. Pay 3, and tap it, untap target creature. Pay 4, and tap it, tap target creature. Pay 5, and tap it, draw a card. You get all that? Essentially, this does everything. This can easily go infinite with Kaidel just by drawing 5 cards in a single turn, which is extremely easy for this deck to do. So essentially, you've got infinite colorless mana, you gain infinite life, you can untap or tap any creature as many times as you want, and you can draw your entire deck. Obviously, there are plenty of ways to win from there. And then Umbral Mantle doesn't do quite as many things, but it's still incredibly effective. It's an equipment that costs 3 and it costs 0 to equip. It has Equip Creature as pay 3 and untap that this creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. So this one actually only requires Kaidel to tap for 4 mana. Once she does, we can make her infinitely large and also gain infinite colorless mana. And again, there are plenty of ways to win from there. Speaking of equipment though, we're also going to add in Swiftfoot Boots. This equipment works great with Kaidel, giving her not only Hexproof, but also Haste. So it protects her and we can utilize her mana right away. But now let's talk about some upgrades to our land package, starting with Manamo School at Water's Edge. This is a fantastic legendary land in Commander. It taps for a blue, and we can pay a blue and tap it to untap target legendary permanent. So there's pretty much no downside to this and just taking on an island and putting this in. Like a basic land, it doesn't come into play tapped or anything, and it also has that fantastic activation. Essentially for just one mana, we can double up how much mana Kaidel can produce. So if she's tapping for 10, now she taps for 20, or basically 19 because we have to pay that extra mana to do so, but still, you know what I mean. At nearly $12, it is an expensive card, but it's well worth it in these upgrades. Another upgrade to our land package comes with Seagate Restoration slash Seagate Reborn. This MDFC is amazing in this deck. The front side is Seagate Restoration, which is a sorcery for four blue, blue, blue. It says draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So this essentially doubles up our hand plus one, and then like Finale of Revelation, it gives us no maximum hand size for the rest of the game permanently. And the other side is Seagate Reborn, which as it enters the battlefield, we can pay three life if we don't enter the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for a blue. So when needed, we can have it come into play untapped at the low cost of just three life. And finally, another one of our land upgrades comes with Balaged Recovery slash Balaged Sanctuary. This is another MDFC, and although it's an uncommon one, it's fantastic in a lot of decks, including this one. The front sign Balaged Recovery is a sorcery for two and a green, and says return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is a slightly more expensive regrowth, but we can play it as a land, so it's a lot more flexible. The other side, Balaged Sanctuary, enters the battlefield, tapped and it taps for a green. So this might be slower than just a basic, but again, that flexibility is huge. If you're looking to play this deck, consider joining the amazing Play EDH Discord. It's a great way to play Commander over webcam. In the description below, you'll find their Discord invite link, as well as the tier that this deck has been approved at next to the deck list. So if you want to pick it up and play it as is, you can, and be sure to read their welcome information for more details. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.